This is the first in a series of tutorials looking at how to use the Quest system in the space virtual world. To follow these tutorials, you need to have installed Unity, imported the Space Editor Pack, and registered as a space creator. In this first tutorial, I'll be showing how to get a basic Quest uploaded, and I'll give an overview of the different things you can use the Quest system for. Then in later tutorials, I'll be building a simple game level from scratch, which you can also download as a Unity package and import into your own project. The Quest system allows you to create narrative-based interactions inside your regions. These might be games, they could be tutorials, or they could be education or training modules or tours. Quest narratives are built using different types of steps, which link to each other in this node editor built into your project. Most steps are either conversation or activity. Conversation steps are cutscenes, passive steps with exposition. Activity steps might be instantaneous, like teleporting a user to a specific location or adding an item to their inventory, or they might be interactive, requiring the user to visit a location or complete an entire round of a game. These steps can then be stitched together in a single linear narrative or in a branched narrative. You can create main compulsory quest lines, optional side quests and repeatable quests. You can build just using the steps we give you, or you can script your own steps, allowing you to use the quest system to provide a structure and progress around your own unique games. For these tutorials, I'm using a region with a simple racing game. You can download the entire region with the quest inside as a Unity package that you can open in your own project and upload to test and rework. In this video, I'm going to focus on the basics of setting up a quest in your region. Then we'll look at the different step types you can build with and the other tools in the quest system. So the first thing we need to look at is the quest designer. I'm going to create an empty game object in my scene by right-clicking in the hierarchy and I'm going to add the Quest Designer component by searching for Quest Designer in the Inspector. I'm going to click Reserve to secure an ID for the Quest. I tend to keep all the assets used in my Quest as child objects to the Quest Designer. That makes it easy to drag the entire Quest into the Project folder and then I can drag it into a new scene or even share it as a Unity package with other creators as a starting template for building complex stories. But if you do move your quest from one region to another, please clear out the ID and reserve a new one. The ID is tied to the region. So if you have downloaded this region as a Unity package so that you can pull this quest apart and play with it yourself, you'll need to add an ID before you can upload it to your own account. Now I add a name and description to the quest. This will be seen by users when they launch the quest. The quest type drop-down box allows you to choose different types of quest. Main quest means that each user can only play the quest once. Daily quest means they can play the quest once a day. Activity quest means they can play it as many times as they want to. The quest dependency function allows you to chain quests to each other and allows you to close down branched narratives. If I set the size to one, I can add the ID for a single other quest. This means that I have to have completed that quest to start this one and it allows a simple linear chaining of subsequent quests. If I expand the size to more than one, I can add multiple quest IDs. So I can create a more open story with parallel quests, each of which the user has to complete 
but which they can complete in any order they choose. Only once they complete all of them can they progress to the next stage. So for instance, they have to complete the quest that gives them the sword, they have to qu complete the quest that gives them the shield, and they have to complete the quest that gives them the magic potion. But they can do those quests in any order they decide. These dependencies don't apply in the editor, so you can play and test individual quests in isolation in here. But you'll probably want to test individual quests online as well, submitting various revisions of the region to the creator grid. And you might want to leave the quest dependencies empty until you've finished your testing online so you don't have to play through prior quests in your testing cycles. The reward item ID field allows you to reward the user when they successfully complete the quest. You can enter the ID of any item that has been uploaded as a virtual good to the Space Virtual World system. If you look at our tutorials on uploading virtual goods, you'll see it's a straightforward process. The ID can be grabbed both from the virtual good component on the object itself once it has been uploaded, or you can grab it from curator.sign.space where you'll see an item list of everything that you have uploaded to the grid. If you leave the reward item ID as zero, as I'm doing here, the user will be given some silver. If you set it to minus one, the user will get no reward at all and will not see a celebration message at the end of the quest. So that's ideal if you're using the quest system for a tutorial or another narrative process that doesn't actually end in a reward. The clear play records from creator button will clear your status on the quest. So if the type is set to main or daily, but you're replaying it repeatedly in testing, you can click this and replay instantly. You could also leave the quest type to activity until you go live and set it to main or daily only when you've finished testing. Now I'm ready to set up the steps in my quest. In the next tutorial, I'll be looking at the first step type, the quest NPC.